the media evolution of the media wore me down. Okay. You know, the idea that in 1997, I had to worry about, you know, seven, 10, 15 other media outlets reporting things I needed to chase down and, and see if it was accurate and match it and beat it. And nowadays, like any schmuck can put something on Twitter and it's just the, the, the way it goes now is like, oh, I better look into that, you know, or if I don't say it, my boss would. And, you know, it just wears you down. You well, know, isn't that, really, you, you really brought up a great point because thanks to Twitter and Facebook and even LinkedIn now, which is becoming nightmarish, it's not for business anymore, and, and Instagram and TikTok, isn't it more difficult, maybe even impossible, for people like yourself, ourselves, professionals, who go out, report, and we have a standard to live up to, but we are now the lower end of the totem pole anymore because people go immediately to the nut job wingnut who claims to have inside sources. I love that. My sources tell me. Your sources are basically because you read Ken Davidoff <laughs> and you read his column and you spit it there, but that becomes the worst thing. You don't really know if you're making a difference when you're trying to report the facts anymore. I wouldn't get that dramatic yet. I, I feel like I did have an Well, I'm just a drama thought, queen, so. Ken, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as I said, it's it's just exhausting. And, and it, to, oh, this person said that, you know, this uh, we got to chase that down. I just spent so much of my time just putting out fires that uh, I just I found that very draining. Is that just part of it, too? But even when you talk about all the television shows and the radio shows and the sports talk shows, there's so much innuendo, uh, innuendo rather, and so much guesswork that I, I, I find myself a lot of times, Ken, trying to tell people there's a difference between reporting and opinion. And it seems that that's the thing that wears us down, yes? Yeah, I mean, it, I'd say it's nuanced, Ed. I mean, I'll give you a recent example. And this was after I gave my notice. And actually, yeah, after I had announced, made my announcement on Twitter and to friends and family. And it was uh, the MLB owners meetings. And Rob Manfred, sorry to bring up his name, <laughs> at a press conference. And he announced, like, we have, you know, describing where things stood in these labor talks. And so we have agreed uh, that we're going to use a universal designated hitter. So the the truth of it was they had agreed on that months prior to that, you know, last summer. But also the, the bigger truth is that nothing is official in a collective bargaining agreement until everything is official. So, you know, let's say the owners, for some bizarre reason, went to the player and said, well, all right, no DH either league, but we'll give you the, the luxury tax the threshold will be uh, $350 million. The players say, okay, we'll sign for that. So... Rob used a, maybe the imprecise figure of speech, but that statement just took off. And all of a sudden on Twitter, like, oh, that's the end of the pitcher hitting, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And even like my, my, I'd explain to my own desk, my own editor is like, no, this is not the story. Like, you know, they're, oh, well, obviously the story is that the, the hitter pitching, the pitcher hitting is gone now. Like, no, that's not the story that we've known that for months. Uh, so just that nuance. And I want to write a whole story explaining what I just explained to you, which did well, you know, it got a lot of hits online. So that's a, a case where my expertise did really have value and, and generated attention. But I was just so annoyed to have another, again, another fire to put out. 